read here in this letter that Don Pedro of Aragon comes this night to Messina. <laughs> How many gentlemen have you lost in this action? But few of any sort and none of any name. I see here that he has bestowed much honor upon a young Florentine named Claudio. Much deserved on his part and equally remembered by Don Pedro. He hath borne himself beyond his promised age, doing in the figure of a lamb the feats of a lion. I pray you, is Signor Montanto returned from the wars or no? <laughs> I know none of that name, lady. There was none such in the army of any sort. What is he that you ask for, niece? My cousin means Signor Benedict of Padua. Well, he's returned and as pleasant as he ever was. I pray you, how many hath he killed and eaten in these wars? But how many hath he killed, for indeed I promise to eat all of his killing? He hath done good service, lady, in these wars. You had musty victual, and he hath helped to eat it. He is a very valiant trencherman. He hath an excellent stomach. And I... a good soldier, too, lady. And a good soldier, too, lady. But what is he to a lord? A lord to a lord, a man to a man, stuffed with all honorable virtues. Ah, it is so, indeed. He is no less than a stuffed man. But, uh, for the stuffing... Well, we are all mortal. Faith, niece, you tax in your Benedict too much. But he'll be meet with you, I doubt it not. I see, lady. The gentleman is not in your books. No. And he were, I would burn my study. But uh, who's his companion now? Is there no young swearer that will make a voyage with him to the devil? He is most in the company of the right noble Claudio. Oh, Lord, he will hang upon him like a disease. He is sooner caught than the pestilence, and the taker runs presently mad. <laughs> God help the noble Claudio. I will hold friends with you, lady. Do, good friend. You will never run mad, niece. No, not till a hot January. Signor Leonardo, are you come to meet George Rubble? <laughs> the fashion of the world is to avoid cost, and you encounter it. <laughs> Never came trouble to my house in the likeness of your oh. grace. For trouble being gone, comfort should remain. But when you depart from me, sorrow abides and happiness takes his leave. <laughs> <laughs> my dear Lady Disdain, are you yet still living? Is it possible Disdain should die while she has such meat food to feed it as Signor Benedict? Courtesy itself must convert to disdain if you come in her presence. Why then, courtesy is a turncoat, mm -hmm. for it is certain that I am loved of all ladies. <laughs> Only you accepted, mm -hmm. and I would I could find in my heart that I had not a hard heart, for truly I love none. Oh, a dear happiness to women! <laughs> they would else have been troubled with a pernicious suitor. I thank God and my cold blood, I am of your humor for that. I had rather hear my dog bark at a crow than a man swear he loves me. God keep your ladyship still in that mind, so some gentleman or other shall escape a predestined scratched face. Oh, my scratching cannot make it worse since for such a face as yours were. Well, you are a rare parrot teacher. Blah, 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 A bird blah, blah. of my tongue is better than a beast of yours. I would my horse at the speed of your tongue and so good a continuer. But keep your way. In God's name, I have done. Signor Benedict. My dear friend Leonardo has invited you all. I tell him we shall stay here at the least a month, and he heartily prays some occasion may detain us longer. <laughs> I dare swear he is no hypocrite, uh, but prays from his heart. If you swear, my lord, you shall not be forsworn. <laughs> 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 Uh, I must bid you welcome. Being reconciled to the prince, dear brother, I owe you all duty. I thank you. I am uh, not of many words, but uh, I thank you. <laughs> Please, at your grace, lead on. Your hand, Leonato. We will go together. <laughs> <laughs> Benedict! Claudio! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa! Yes! Didst thou note the daughter of Signor Leonardo? I noted her not, 
but I looked on her. Is she not a modest young lady? Do you question me as an honest man should do for my simple judgment? Or would you rather me speak after my custom as being a professed tyrant to their sex? Now I pray you speak in sober judgment. Why, in faith, methinks she's too low for a high praise, too brown for a fair praise, and too little for a great praise. <laughs> Only this commendation can I afford her, that were she other than she is, she were unhandsome. And that being as she is, I do not like her. <laughs> well, can the world buy such a jewel? Yay! And a case to put it into! But, speak you this with a sad brow. Come, in what key shall a man take you to go in the song? In mine eye, she's the sweetest lady I ever looked on. I can see without spectacles, and I see no such matter. There's her cousin, and were she not possessed with a fury, exceeds her as much in beauty as the first of May doth the last of December. But you have no intent to turn husband, have you? I would scarce trust myself, though I had sworn the contrary, if Hero would be my wife. Oh, is it come to this? Shall I never see a bachelor of threescore again? Go to, in faith. And thou wilt thrust thy neck into a yoke, wear the print of it, and sigh away Sundays. <laughs> well, look, Don Pedro's returned to seek you. What secret hath held you here that you followed not to Leonato's? I would your grace constrain me to tell. I charge thee on thy allegiance. You hear, Count Claudio, I can be as secret as a dumb man, so I would have you think. But on my allegiance, mark you, on my allegiance, he is in love. <laughs> With who? Now that is your grace's part. Mark how short his answer is. With hero, Leonardo's short daughter. <laughs> if it were so, so were it uttered. Ah, men, if you love her, for the lady is very well worthy. Oh, you speak this to fetch me and my by lord? By my troth, I spoke my thought. And in faith, my lord, I spoke mine. <laughs> and by my too troth in faith, my lord, I spoke mine. That I love her, I feel. Well, that she is worthy, I know. Mm. That I neither feel how she should be loved, nor how she should be worthy, is the opinion fire cannot melt out of me. I will die in a death to stink. Thou wast ever an obstinate heretic in the spite of beauty. And never could maintain his part but in the force of his will. <laughs> that a woman conceived me, I thank her. That she likewise brought me up, I give her my most humble thanks. But that I shall have a recheat winded on my forehead, or hang my bugle on an invisible baldric, all women shall pardon me. Because I will do them no wrong to mistrust any. I will do myself the right to trust none. <laughs> and the fine is, for which I may go the finer, I will live a bachelor. I shall see thee ere I die look pale with love. In the meantime, good Signor Benedict, repair to Leonato's. <laughs> Commend me to him, and tell him I will not fail him at supper, for indeed he hath made a great preparation. Nay, mock not, mock not. Ere you flout ends any further, examine your conscience. And so, I leave you. My liege, your highness now may do me some good. My love is thine to teach. Teach it but how, and thou shalt learn how apt it is to learn any hard lesson that may do thee good. <laughs> Hath Leonardo any son? No child but hero, she's his only heir. Dost thou affect her, Claudio? Oh. Come thronging soft and delicate desires, all prompting me how fair young hero is, saying I liked her ere I went to wars. <laughs> thou wilt be like a lover presently, and die the hero with a book of words. If thou dost love fair hero, cherish it, and I will break with her and with her father, and she shall be thine. Was not to this <laughs> conclusion that thou began to twist so fine a story. Oh, how sweetly you do minister love, knowing love greased by his complexion. but. Lest my liking too sudden seem, I would have solved it with longer treatise. And I shall fit thee with a remedy. I know we shall have reveling tonight. I shall assume thy part in some disguise and tell, fair hero, I am Claudio, and in her bosom I'll enclasp my heart and take her hearing prisoner with the force and strong encounter of my amorous tale. Then after to her father will I break it. The conclusion is she shall be thine. In practice, let us put it presently. <laughs>
I, I wonder that thou being, as thou sayest thou art, born under Saturn, goest about to apply a moral medicine to a mortifying mischief. <sighs> I had rather be a canker in a hedge than a rose in his grace, and it benefits my blood to be disdained of all than to fashion a carriage to rob love from me. Can you make no use of your discontent? Oh, I make all use of it, for I use it only. The prince, your brother, is royally entertained by Leonardo, and I have intelligence of an intended marriage. Will it serve for any model to build mischief on? Mary, it is your brother's right hand. Who? The most exquisite Claudio? Even he. A oh, proper squire. And who? And who? Which way looks he? Oh, Mary, on Hero, the daughter and heir of Leonato. <laughs> A very forward march, Jack. How came you by this? I was smoking in a musty room, mm. and comes me the prince and Claudio hand in hand in sad conference. I, I, I there had it agreed upon that the prince should woo Hero for himself, and having obtained her, give her to Count Claudio. <gasps> Come, come, let us sit there. Uh, this may prove food to my displeasure. That young startup has all the glory of my overthrow. If I can cross him in any way, I bless myself every way. You are sure and will assist me? To the death, my lord! <laughs> <laughs> Something else, maybe. How about this donut? Oh, thank you, Baracchio! Boy, do I want that! Was not Count John here at supper? Oh, how tartly that gentleman looks! I can never see him, but I am heartburned an hour after. He is of a very melancholy disposition. He were an excellent man that were made just in the midway between him and Benedict. The one is too like an image and says nothing. The other too like my lady's eldest son, evermore tattling. <laughs> so hath Signor Benedict's tongue in Count John's mouth, and hath Count John's melancholy in Signor Benedict's face. With a good leg and a good foot, uncle, and in enough money in his purse, such a man would win any woman in the world, if he could get her goodwill. By my troth, thou wilt never get thee a husband if thou be so shrewd of thy tongue. <laughs> Oh, well, I hope to see you one day fitted with a husband. <laughs> <laughs> not till God make men of some other metal than earth. Would it not grieve a woman to be overmastered with a piece of valiant dust? To make an account of her life to a clod of wayward moral? No, uncle, all none. <laughs> Adam's sons are my brethren, and truly I hold it a sin to match my kindred. <laughs> Daughter, remember what I told you. If the prince do solicit you in that kind, you know your answer. <sighs> the fall will be in the music, cousin, if you be not wooed in good time. If the prince be too important, tell him there is measure in everything. And so, dance out the answer. For hear me, hero, wooing, wedding, and repenting is as a scotch jig, a measure, and a syncopace. The first suit is hot and hasty. Like a scotch jig, and full as fantastical. <laughs> the wedding, merrily modest as a measure, full of stage and ancestry, and then comes repentance, and with his bad legs, falls into the syncopace faster and faster, till he sink to his grave. <laughs> Cousin, you apprehend passing shrewdly. <laughs> Will you not tell me who told you so? 
now you shall pardon me. Nor will you tell me who you are? Oh, not now. Oh, that it was disdainful. And that I had my wit out of a hundred merry tales. Wait, this is in your Benedict. That said so. Oh, what's he? I am sure you know him well enough. Not I, believe me. Did he never make you laugh? I pray you, what is he? Why, he is the prince's jester. A very dull fool. Only his gift is in devising impossible slanders. None but libertines delight in him, and the commendation is not in his wit, but in his villainy, for he both pleases men and angers them, and then they laugh at him and beat him. <laughs> I'm sure he's in the fleet. I would he had boarded me. Well, when I know the gentleman, I'll tell him what you say. Rasta ta 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 and hath withdrawn her father to break with him about it. The ladies follow her, and but one visor remains. And that is called Claudio. I know him by his bearings. I'm not you, Signor Benedict. You know me well, I am he. Ah, uh, Signor, you are very near my brother in his love. I pray you dissuade him from her. She is no equal for his birth. You may do the part of an honest man in it. How know you he loves her? Uh, I, I heard him swear his affection. And so did I too. And he swore he would marry her tonight. Come, let us to the banquet. <laughs> Thus answer I in the name of Benedict, but hear these ale news with the ears of Claudio. Tis certain so the prince woos for himself. This is an accident of hourly proof which I mistrusted not. Farewell therefore, hero. God, Claudio! Yea, the same. Would you go with me? Whither? Even to the next willow about your own business, county. What fashion will you wear the garland of? Around your neck like a usurer's chain? Under your arm like a lieutenant's scarf? You must wear it one way, because the prince hath won your hero! I wish him joy of her. Whoa! Why, that's spoken like an honest rover. So they sell bollocks? But do you think the prince would have served you thus? I pray you leave me. Oh, no, whoa! Oh. Now you strike like the blind man. Was the boy that stole your meat, and now you'll beat the post? If it will not be, I'll leave you. Alas, poor hurt fowl. Now shall I creep into the sedges. But that my lady Beatrice should know me and not me. The, the princess fool! <laughs> now, senor, where's the count? Did you see him? Troth, my lord, I played the part of Lady Fame, and I found him as melancholy as a lodge in a warren. The Lady Beatrice hath a quarrel with you. The gentleman that danced with her told her she is much wronged by you. Oh, she misused me past the endurance of a block. Come, talk not of her. Look, here she comes. Hey, will your grace command me any service to the world's end? I will go on the, the slightest errand now to the antiquity that you can devise to send me up. Do you have any episodes to depict me? Rather than all three words conference with that harpy! You have no appointment for me? Oh. None but desire your good company! Oh God, sir, this is a bitch I love not. I cannot endure my lady's tongue. Come, oh, lady! Tom, you have lost the heart of Signor Benedict. Indeed, my lord, he lent it me a while, and I gave him use for it. A double heart for a single one. Mary, once before, he wanted of me with false dice. Therefore, your grace may well say I have lost it. You put him down, lady, you put him down. So would I not he should do me, my lord, thus I should prove the mother of fools. I brought Count Claudio, whom you sent me to see. Why, how now, Count? Wherefore are you sad? Neither, my lord. How then, sick? Neither, my lord. The Count is neither sad, nor sick, nor merry. 
Nor well. But civil, Count. Civil as an orange and something of that jealous complexion. Faith, lady, I think you're blazing to be true, though. I'll be sworn if he be so, his conceit is false. Here, Claudio, I have wooed in thy name, and fair hero is won. I have broke with her father in his goodwill of taint. Name the day and marriage, and God give thee joy. Speak, Count, tis your cue. Oh, silence is the perfectest herald of joy. I were but little happy if I could say how much. <laughs> ah, good Lord for a life. <laughs> Thus goes everyone to the world. But I. <laughs> and I am sunburnt. I might sit in a corner and cry, I ho for a husband. Lady Beatrice, I will get you one. <laughs> I'd rather have one of your father's getting. <laughs> Hunter your Grace near a brother like you? Your father got excellent husbands if a maid could come by them. Will you have me, lady? No, my lord. Unless I might have another for working days. Your grace is too costly to wear every day. But I, I beseech your grace, Pardon me, I was born to speak all mirth and no matter. Your silence most offends me, and to be merry best becomes you, for out of question you were born in a merry hour. <laughs> no, sure, my lord, my mother cried. Uh, but then <laughs> there was a star danced, and under that, I was born. <laughs> Gotta give you joy! <laughs> By my troth, the pleasant spirited lady, she cannot endure to hear tale of a husband. She were an excellent wife for Benedict. Oh, Lord, my Lord, if they were but a week married, they would talk themselves mad. <laughs> Count Claudio, uh, when mean you go to church? Uh, tomorrow, my Lord. Time goes on crutches till love has all his rights. Come, Claudio, you shake the head at so long a breathing, but I warrant you the time shall not go dully by us. I will in the interim undertake one of Hercules' labors, which is to bring Signor Benedict and the Lady Beatrice into a mountain of affection the one with the other, I would fain have it in that, and I doubt not, but to fashion it, if thou wilt but lend such assistance as I shall give thee direction. My lord, I am for you, though it'll cost me ten nights watching. If we can do this, Cupid is no longer an archer. His glory shall be ours, for we are the only love gods. It is so, the Count Claudio shall marry the daughter of Leonardo. <sighs> Yea, my lord. But I can cross it. Mm -hmm. Any bar, any cross, any impediment will be menaceable to me. Huh? <sighs> I am sick and displeasure to him. And whatsoever comes at the war, his affection ranges evenly with mine. How canst thou cross this marriage? Not honestly, my lord, but so covertly that no dishonesty shall appear in me. <sighs> Show me briefly how. I think I told your lordship a year since how much I am in favor of Margaret, the lady hero's gentlewoman. <laughs> I remember. I can, at any unseasonable instant of the night, appoint a look out her lady's chamber window. What life is that to be the death of this marriage? The poison of this lies in you to temper. Go to the prince, your brother. Spare not to tell him that he hath wronged his honor by marrying the renowned Claudio whose estimation do you mightily hold up to a contaminated stale, such a one as Hero? What proof shall I make of that? Proof enough to misuse the prince, to vex Claudio, to undo Hero, <laughs> and to kill Leonardo! <laughs> <laughs> for you for any other issue? Only to despite them? Gah, I will endeavor anything. Go to, then. Find me a meet hour to draw Don Pedro and the Count Claudio alone. Tell them that you know that Hero loves me. In tender kindness of zeal, both on the Prince and Claudio, as in love of your brother's honor, who hath made this match, and his friend's reputation, who is thus likely to be cousin to the semblance of the maid that you have discovered thus. They will scarcely believe this without trial. Offer them instances which shall bear no less likelihood than to see me outside a lady's chamber window. Hear me call Margaret Hero. Hear Margaret to me, Claudio. And bring them to see this the very night before the intended wedding. For I will so fashion the matter that Hero shall be absent. And there shall be such seeming truth of Hero's disloyalty the jealousy shall be called assurance, 
and all preparation overthrown! <laughs> <laughs> Grow this to what issue it can? I will put it in practice. Be cunning. Be cunning in the working this. And thy fee is a thousand ducats. Well, be you confident in the accusation, and my cunning will not shame me. I will go presently learn the day of marriage. I do much wonder how one man, after seeing how much another man is a fool when he dedicates his behaviors to love, will, after laughing at such shallow follies in others, become the argument of his own scorn by falling in love himself. And such a man is Claudio. <laughs> ha! Leonardo and Monsieur Love, I will hide me in the arbor. <laughs> See, you were better to hit himself. Oh, very well, my lord. <laughs> oh, I stuck on, stuck on. I did never think the lady would have loved any man. No, nor I neither, but so wonderful that she should so dote on Signor Benedict, whom she in all outward behavior seemed ever to abhor. Why, what effects of passion shows she? What effects, my lord? She will sit you. You heard my daughter tell you how. She did indeed. I would have thought her spirit be invincible against all assaults of affection. I would have sworn it so, especially against Benedict. Mm. Hath Benedict made his love known to Beatrice? No. And swears he never will. That's their torment. Oh, tis true indeed. So your daughter says. Shall I, says she, have so often countered with scorn, write to him, I love him? This she says while well, she's beginning to write, for she'll be up to Twenty times a night, and there will she sit in her smock till she hath writ a page. Now you talk of a sheet of paper, I remember a pretty jest your daughter told us oh, of. Oh, when she was beginning to re read what she hath written, found Benedict and oh, Beatrice between oh, the sheets. That. Oh, she <laughs> tore the letter into a thousand halfpence, <sighs> railed at herself that she should be so immodest as to write to one she know would flout her. Oh. I measure him, says she, mm. by my own. Then, down upon her knees, she falls, weeps, sobs, tears her hair, beats her heart. God! Sweet Benedict, give me patience. <laughs> oh, well, I feel sorry for Beatrice. Shall we go find Benedict and tell him of her love? Oh, uh, if you do not dote, I will never trust my expectation. <laughs> May we give the same net spread for her. Let us call her to tell him into dinner. <laughs> this can be no trick. <laughs> the conference was sadly born. They have the truth of this from Hero. They seem to pity the lady. It seems her affections have their full bent. Love me. Why? It must be requited. I did never think to marry. I must not seem proud. Happier are those who can hear their own detractions and put them demanding. They say the lady is fair. Tis a truth I can bear witness. And virtuous, tis so. I, I cannot reprove it. And wise, but for loving me. <laughs> By my troth, it is no addition to her wit, nor no great argument of her folly. For I shall fall horribly in love with her. I may chance have some odd quirks and remnants of wit broken on me because I have so long railed against marriage. But doth not the appetite alter? A man loves the meat in his youth that he cannot endure in his age. <laughs> Shall these sentences and quips and paper bullets of the mind so awe a man from the career of his humor? No. The world must be peopled! 
<laughs> when I said I would die a bachelor, I did never think to live till I were married. Well, here comes Beatrice by this day. She is a fair lady. I do spy some marks of love in her. <laughs> Against my will, I am sent to bid you come into dinner. I thank thee, Beatrice, for, for your pains. I take no more pains for those thanks than you take pains to thank me. If it had been painful, I would not have come. You, you take pleasure, then, in the message. Yea, just so much as you may take upon a nice point and choke it all with all. <laughs> you have no stomach, senor. Fare you well. <laughs> Against my will, I'm said to bid thee come into dinner? There is a double meaning in that. <laughs> I took no more pains for those thanks than you took pains to thank me. Well, that's as easy to say. Any pains I take for you is as easy as love. If I do not pity of her, I am a villain. If I do not love her, I am a fool. I will go get her picture. Now, Ursula, when Beatrice doth come, as we do trace this alley up and down, our talk must only be a Benedict. When I do name him, let it be thy part to praise him more than ever man did merit. Oh, now begin, for look where Beatrice, like a lapwing, runs close by the ground to hear our confidence. Fear you not, my part of the dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ursula, she is too disdainful. I know her spirits are as coy and wild as haggards of the rock. But are you sure that Benedict loves Beatrice so entirely? <laughs> so says the prince and my new trothed lord. Oh, 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 why did you so that not the gentleman deserve as full as fortune in a bed as ever Beatrice shall couch upon? Well, God of love, I know Benedict doth deserve as much as may be yielded to a man, but nature never framed a woman's heart of prouder stuff than that Beatrice. Oh, <laughs> oh sure, sure, I think so, and think certainly it were not good. She knew his love, lest she'll make Bored at it. Why, you speak truth. Well, I never yet saw a man. How wise, how noble, how young, how rarely featured. But she would spell him backward. So turned she every man the wrong side out. And never hints the truth and virtue that which merit and simpleness purchaseth. Sure, sure. Such copying is not commendable. No, not to be so odd. And from all fashions, as Beatrice says, cannot be commendable. But who dare tell her so? If I should speak, she would mock me into error. She would laugh me out of myself, press me to death with wit. What? Therefore, let Benedict, like covered fire, consume away in his eyes, waste inwardly. It were a better death than die with mocks, which is as bad as die tickling. <laughs> <laughs> Yet tell her of it, hear what she will say. No. Rather, I will go to Benedict and counsel him to fight against his passion. Oh. Oh. Do not do your cousin such a wrong. She cannot be so much without true judgment, having so swift and excellent a wit as she is prized to have as to refuse a rare gentleman as Signor Benedict. When are you to be married, madam? Why, every day, tomorrow. Come, go in. I'll show thee some attires and have thy counsel, which is best to furnish me tomorrow. She's lined, I warrant you. We have caught her, madam. If it proves so, then loving goes by haps. Some cupids kill with arrows, some with traps. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what fire is in mine ears? Can this be true? Stand I condemned for pride and scorn so much? <laughs> Contempt, farewell, and made in pride adieu. <laughs> no glory lives behind the back of such. And Benedict. Love on. <laughs> I will requite thee. <laughs> Taming my wild heart to thy loving hand. <laughs> if thou dost love my kindness, shall incite thee to bind our loves up in a holy band. For others say thou dost deserve, and I believe it better than reportingly. 
You like it so far? Our super secret plan. We made Beatrice fall in love with Betty Bake. It's going great. And I'm, I'm, I don't Whoa. know about you, Claudio. Nothing can go wrong. <laughs> My lord and brother, God save you. Oh, good evening, good brother. <laughs> if your leisure served, I uh, would speak with you. Oh, in private? Uh, if it so please you. Yet Count Claudio may hear, for what I would speak of concerns him. Why, what's the matter? Means your lordship to be married tomorrow? <laughs> you know he does. I know not that when he knows what I know. If there be any impediment, I pray you discover it. You may think I love you now. Why, what's the matter? I came hither to tell you, and the circumstances shortened, for she has been too long a talk enough. The lady is disloyal. Who, hero? Even she, Leonardo's hero. Your hero, every man's hero. Oh, disloyal? The word is too good to paint out her wickedness. Go, but with me tonight, and you shall see her chamber window entered. Oh. Even the night before her wedding day. If you love her then, tomorrow wed her. But it would better fit your honor to change your mind. May this be so. I will not think it. If there be any reason why I should not marry her, there in the congregation where I should wed, there I will shame her. And as I would for thee to obtain her, I will join thee to disgrace her. Oh, I will disparage her no farther till you are my witnesses. What do you want to say? <laughs> Bear it coldly, but till midnight, and let the issue show itself. they should suffer salvation, body and soul. Nay, that were a punishment too good for them if they should have any allegiance in them, being chosen for the prince's watch. Well, give them their charge, neighbor Dogberry. First, who think you the most desertless man to be constable? This man, sir. Or George Seacole, for they can write and read. Come hither, neighbor. Woo. It's a job, it's a job. Wait, where are the masks? The Black Plague is going around. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Take a step right here. Don your cap. Thank you. <laughs> God hath blessed you with a good name. To be a well-favored man is the gift of fortune, but to write and read comes by nature. I knew it would be your choice. <laughs> you are thought to be the most senseless and fit man for the constable of the watch. This is your charge. You are to comprehend all of their men. <laughs> <laughs> you are to bid any man stand in the prince's name. Stand if he will not stand. <laughs> Why, then take no note of him, but let him go, and, and presently call the rest of the watch together 
and thank God you are rid of a knave. <laughs> you are also to make no noise in the streets, for the watch to babble and to talk is most tolerable and not to be endured. We will rather sleep than talk. We know what belongs to a watch. Mm, yes, you speak like you speak like an ancient and most quiet watchman. For I cannot see how sleeping should offend. <laughs> Only have a care that your bills not be stolen. Hmm. <laughs> well, you are to call at all the alehouses and bid those that are drunk <laughs> get them to bed. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. How if they will not? Why then, let them alone till they are sober. <laughs> you have always been called a merciful man, partner. <laughs> well, masters, good night. <sighs> <laughs> one, one more, on his neighbors. <laughs> one, one more. <clears throat> I pray you, watch about Signor Leonato's door for the, for the wedding being there tomorrow. There's a great coil tonight. <laughs> Adieu! Be vigilant. Oh, yes. Adieu! Be vigilant. I beseech you. Stand thee close, then, under this penned house, for it drizzles rain, and I will, like a true drunkard, utter all to thee. <laughs> <laughs> I know that deformed. He has been a vile thief this seven year. He was up and down like a gentleman. I remember his name. Didst thou not hear somebody? <laughs> no. Was the bane on the house? Know that tonight, I have wooed Margaret, the Lady Hero's gentlewoman, by the name of Hero. <laughs> she leans me out her mistress' chamber window, bids me a thousand times good night. I tell this tale vilely. <laughs> I should first tell thee how the prince, Claudio, and my master, planted, placed, and possessed by my master, Don John, saw afar off in the orchard this amiable, Amiable encounter. And thought they Margaret was hero? The two of them did, but the devil my master knew she was not. And partly by his oaths, which first possessed them, and partly by the dark night, which did deceive them, but chiefly by my villainy, which did confirm any slander Don John had made. Away went Claudio, enraged, swore he would meet her next morning at the temple as appointed. And there, before the whole congregation, shame her with what he saw overnight and sent her home without a husband. I charge thee, in the prince's name, stand! Come! We'll obey you. <laughs> Lady, come you hither to marry with this count. 
I do. If you know of any inward impediments why you should not be conjoined, I charge it on your soul to say. Know you any hero? None, my lord. Know you any count? Oh, what men dare do, what men may do, what men daily do, not knowing what they do. How now? Interjections, what, why then some be of laughing? <laughs> Sandy by Friar, give not this rotten orange to your friend. She is but a sign and semblance of her honor. Look how a maid she blushes here. Would you not swear all that see her that she were a maid by these exterior shows? But she is none. She knows the heat of a luxurious bed. Her blush is guiltiness, not modesty, not in it my soul to an approved wanton. I never tempted her with word too large, but as a brother to a sister, showed bashful sincerity and calmly long. It seemed I ever otherwise to you. Out on thee seeming I'll write against it. It's my lord well that he doth speak so wide. This looks not like a nuptial. <laughs> oh, God, Claudio, stand I here. Is this face heroes? Are our eyes our own? Mary that can, hero. Hero can blot out hero's approach. What man was he talked with you yesternight out of your window betwixt twelve and one? I talked with no man at that hour, my lord. Oh, hero, what a hero hast thou been, if half thy outward graces could be placed upon thy counsels of thy heart. But fare thee well, most foul, most fair. Farewell, for thou pure impiety and impious purity. For thee I shall lock up all gates of love and on my eyelids shall conjecture hang to turn all thoughts of beauty into harm. What oh, now, cousin? We forsake you down. Well, how doth the lady? Dead. Hero? What hero? Senior Benedict, friar! How now, cousin hero? Have comfort, lady. For my part, I'm so attired in wonder, I know not what to say. On my soul, my cousin is belied. Lady, were you her bedfellow last night? No, truly night. But uh, until last night, I have, I have this twelve month been her bedfellow. Call me a fool, if this sweet lady lie not guiltless here under some biting error. Lady, what is he that you are accused of? They know that you accuse me. I know none. If I know more of any man alive than that which made in modesty, thou thwart let all my sins lack mercy. There is some strange misprison in these princes. The spirit of it lives in John the Bastard, whose spirit toils in frame of villainies. Pause a while, and let my counsel sway you in this case. Hero, here, be left for death. Publish it, that she is dead. Indeed, maintain a morning ostentation, hang an epitaph on your family's tomb, and do all rights that appertain unto a berry. What shall become of this? What will this do? Mary, this, well carried on her behalf, shall change slander to remorse. Her, dying, upon the moment that she was accused, shall be lamented, pitied, and excused of every hearer. And if Claudio ever had love interest in his liver, he will wish he had not so accused her. Yet, by my honor, I will deal with this as secretly and justly as your soul should with your body. Come, lady, die to live. This winning day perhaps is but prolonged. Lady Beatrice, have you wept all this while? Yea, and I will weep a while longer. I will not desire that. You have no reason. I do it freely. Surely, I do believe your fair cousin is wronged. How much might the man deserve of me that would write her? Is there any way to show such friendship? A very even way, May but no such friend. May a man do it? It is a man's office, but not yours. I do love nothing in the world so well as you. Is that not strange? As strange as the thing I know not. It, it were as possible for me to say I, I love nothing so well as you. <laughs> but believe me not, and yet I lie not. I, I confess nothing. Nor deny nothing. I, I'm, I'm sorry for my cousin. 
By my sword, Beatrice! Thou lovest me! Do not swear and eat it! I will swear by it that you love me, and I will make him eat it as says I love you not! Will you not eat your word? With no sauce that can be devised to it, I protest I love thee. Oh, then, God forgive me! What, sweet Beatrice? You have stayed me in a happy hour! I was about to protest I loved you. Do it with all my heart? I love you with so much of my heart that none is left to protest. Come, <laughs> bid me do anything for thee. Kill Claudio. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the wide world. You kill me to deny it. Fare you well. Dirt, you Beatrice. I'm gone, though I am here. There is no love in you. I pray you, let me go. Beatrice. In faith, I will go. We'll be friends first. You dare easier be friends with me than fight with mine enemies? Claudio, thy enemy. Is he not approved in the height a villain that hath slandered, scorned, dishonored my kinswoman? Oh, God, that I were a man. What, bear her in hand until they come to take hands? And then, with public accusation, uncovered slander, unmitigated rancor. Oh, God, that I were a man. I would eat his heart in the marketplace. Hear me, Beatrice. Sweet hero. She's wronged. She's slandered. She's undone. That I were a man for his sake. Or that I had any friend would be a man for my sake. But manhood is melted into curtsies, valor into compliment, and men are only turned into tongue and trim ones, too. He is now as valiant as Hercules that only tells a lie and swears it. I cannot be a man with wishing. Therefore, I will die a woman with grieving. Terry, Beatrice, I protest I love thee. Use it for my love some other way than swearing by it. Think you in your soul, the Count Claudio hath wronged Hero. Yea, as sure as I have a thought or a soul. Enough. I'm engaged. I will challenge him. By this hand, I'll kiss you. And so I leave you. By this hand, Claudio shall render me a dear account. Go, comfort your cousin. I must say she is dead. So, farewell. I'm back. Where is he? What sounds like you? Well, how could you do it? You yes. dishonored my lady. Well, you dishonored me. Stop. Oh, what's to become of us? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. That's it. Hold still. This is the big one. Okay, I'm ready. Hit me, hit me. Ah, oh, let me go! Let me go! How dare you run away from me? Hit that! And that! And in this! What do you have to say for yourself, you rat? You foul fiend! It hurts, but keep hitting. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Is our whole assembly appeared? But which of the offenders that are to be examined, let them come before the master constable. Yea, Mary, let them come before mm. me. <coughs> what okay, is down. your name? Baracchio. Right down. Baracchio. Yours. Sarah! I am a gentleman, sir, and my name is Conrad! <gasps> oh, right down! Oh, Master Gentleman Conrad! Ooh. Masters, do you serve God? Yes, Nay, sir. sir. We, we hope. hope. We will write down that they hope they serve Ooh. God and write God first, for God defend. But God should go before such villains. Oh. How answer you for yourselves? Mary, sir, we say we are men! Oh, a marvellous witty fellow! Sir, I say to you, it is thought you are false knaves. Uh, sir, I say to you, we are men! Let the watch come forth! Mr. Rochmans, do you have your mat? 
Mr. Watchman sir, it's all upside down. And you're having a good time. <laughs> Masters, I charge you in the prince's name. Accuse these men. <gasps> Was a villain. Oh, right down, Prince John, a villain. What is this flattery to call a prince's brother a villain? Master Constable. I'm ready for the peace. I do not like that look, I promise thee. <laughs> oh, what heard you him say, else? <laughs> <laughs> Mary, that he had received a thousand ducats of Don John for accusing the lady hero wrongfully. Oh, flat burglary as ever was committed. Oh, what else, fellow? And that Count Claudio did mean upon his words to shame hero before the whole assembly and oh. not marry her. Oh. Oh. So, and this the more masters than you can deny, Prince John was in this moment secretly stolen away. Hero was in this manner accused, in this very manner refused, and then upon suddenly died. <laughs> Let these men be bound and brought to Leonatos. I will go before their examination. Come, come, bring away the plaintiffs. Uh. Off, oh, coxcomb! Oh, where's the princess officer? Let him write down coxcomb! Oh, thou nasty varlet! Away! You are an ass! You are an ass! Do I not suspect my place? I not suspect my ears! Oh, that he were here to write me down an ass! But masters, remember that I am an ass? Though it be not written down, yet not forget that I am an ass! <laughs> oh, that I've been written down an ass! How shiny. <laughs> see! See, here comes the man we went to seek. Uh, how now, senor? What news? Good day, my lord. Oh, um, we have been up and down to seek thee, for we are high-proof melancholy. Wilt thou use thy wit? It is in my scabbard. Shall I draw it? Dost thou well thy wit by thy side? Never any did so, though very many have been beside their wit. <laughs> I will bid thee draw as minstrels draw to us pleasure. As I am an honest man, he looks pale. Art thou sick? Or angry? What courage, man. Sir, I shall meet your wit in the career, and you charge it against me. I pray you, choose another subject. Nay, then give him another. This last was broke cross. By the light, he changes more and more. I think he be angry indeed. If he be, he knows how to turn his girdle. Shall I speak a word in your ear? God bless me from a challenge. You are a villain. I just not. I will make a good how you dare, with what you dare, and when you dare. Do me right, or I will protest your cowardice. You have killed an innocent lady, and her death shall fall heavy on you. Let me hear from you. I will meet you, so I may have good cheer. I'll tell thee how Beatrice praised thy wit the other day. I said thou had a good wit. Uh, uh, right, a fine wit. Right, says she, the fine little one. <laughs> no, said I, a great wit. True, says she, a great gross one. 
Oh, nay, said I, good wit. Just, said she, it hurt nobody. Thus did she an hour together, can shape thy particular virtues, yet at last she concluded with a sigh, thou wast the, the properest man in Italy. Which she wept heartily and said she cared not. Fare you well, boy. You know my mind. You breath jest like braggarts to their blades, which, God be thanked, hurt not. My lord, for your many courtesies, I thank you. I must discontinue your company. Your brother, the bastard, is fled from Messina. You among you have killed a sweet and innocent lady. For my lord Lackbeard there, he and I shall meet. Tell then, peace be with him. He is in earnest. In most profound earnest, and I'll warrant you for the love of Beatrice. And hath challenged thee. Most sincerely. Soft you, let me be. Pluck up my heart and be sad. Did he not say my brother was fled? Come you, sir. If justice cannot tame you, she shall ne'er weigh more reason in her balance. How now, my brother's man bound Braccio? Uh, hearken after his offense, my lord. Officers, what offense has this man done? Mary, sir, he has committed false reports. Moreover, he slanders. Secondary, he has belied a lady. Sixth and lastly, he has committed unjust things. And to conclude, he is a lying knave. <laughs> First, I ask thee what he has done. Thirdly, what is his offense? Sixth and lastly, why he is committed. And to conclude, what shall I to his charge? Rightly reasoned, and by my troth, and in his own division, there's one meaning well suited. What's your offense, master, that you are thus bound to your answer? This learned constable is too cunning to be understood. What's your offense? <laughs> Sweet prince, let me speak no further to mine answer. Do you hear me and let this cow kill me? Your eyes I have deceived, that which your wisdoms could not discover. These shallow fools have brought the light, who in the night <laughs> overheard me confessing. My villainy they have upon record which I should rather seal with my death than repeat over to my shame. The, the lady is dead upon my, my master's false accusation. And briefly, I do require nothing but the death of a villain. Runs this speech not like iron through your blood. I have drunk poison whilst he uttered it. But did my brother set thee on this? Yea, and he paid me richly for the practice of it. He is composed and framed of treachery and fled he is upon this villainy. Oh, sweet hero, now thy image doth appear in fair semblance that I loved at first. By this time, our officer have reformed Signor Leonotto of the matter. And masters, do not forget to specify, when time and place shall serve, that I am an ass. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the villain? Let me see his eyes. If you know you want to look on me. Art thou the slave that with thy breath has killed mine innocent child? Yea, even I alone. No, not so. Thou beliest thyself. <laughs> My lord, um, I know not how to pray your patience, yet I must speak. Choose your revenge yourself, and impose me to what penance your invention can lay upon my sin. Yet sin die not, but in mistaking. I cannot bid you bid my daughter live. Oh. That were impossible. But mm -hmm. if your love can labor in sad invention, hang an epitaph upon her tomb and sing it to her bones. Sing it tonight, tomorrow, come you to my house. If you cannot yet be my son-in-law, be my nephew. My uncle hath a daughter, almost a copy of mine child that's dead. <laughs> Give her the right that you should have given her cousin, and so dies my revenge. Oh, my lord, your overkindness doth ring tears. I do humbly embrace your offer, and so dispose of henceforth a poor Claudio. I'll see you at my house tomorrow. Tonight, we will bring this bill face to face with Margaret, who I believe was packed into all this wrong, hired to it by your brother. No, by my soul, she was not. No, not what she did when she spoke to me, but hath been just and virtuous in anything that I do know her by. Uh, moreover, sir, which indeed is not under white and black, this plaintiff here, the offender, did call me an ass. 
I beseech you, let it be remembered in his punishment. I thank thee for thy care and honest pains and discharge thee of thy prisoner. I thank thee. Oh, God keep your worship. I wish your worship were. God restore you to hell. I humbly give you leave to depart, and if a merry maid greeting may be wished, God prohibit it. Come, neighbor. Until tomorrow morning, my lords. Sweet Beatrice, would thou come to, would thou come what I called thee? Yea, senor, and depart when you bid me. Oh, but stay a while longer. Then is spoken, fare you well now. Yet, ere I go, let me go with that I came, which is what, knowing what hath passed between you and Claudio. Only foul words, and thereupon will I kiss thy lips. <laughs> foul words is but foul wind, and foul wind is but foul breath, and foul breath is noise. Therefore, I will depart on peace. And now, pray thee tell me, how, how is your cousin? Very ill. And how do you? <laughs> Very ill too. Well, serve God, love me, and men. <laughs> Therefore, I will leave you, for here comes one in haste. Mad! You must come to your uncle's yonder's old coil at home. Oh, my lady hero is wrongfully accused. The prince and Claudio mightily abused. And John John, the author of all, is fled and gone. Will you come presently? Will you go hear this news, senor? I will live in your heart, die in thy lap, be buried in your eyes. And moreover, I will go with you to your uncle's. <laughs> You gentlewoman all, when I call you forth, come hither masked. Well, Claudio, are you yet determined to marry today with my brother's daughter? Come forth! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, which is the lady I must seize upon? Oh, okay. <laughs> this same is her, and I do give her to you. Give me your hand. No, not before you uh, swear to marry her. Oh, give me your hand, I swear. I, I am your husband, if you like of me. And when I lived, I was your other wife. Huh? And when you love, you were my other husband. Another hero? Nothing certain -er. <laughs> One hero died defiled, but I live, and surely as I live, I am a maid. <laughs> she died, my lord, but whilst her slander lived. Soft and fair. <laughs> Which is Beatrice? No <laughs> <laughs> I answer to that name. <laughs> what is your will? Do you not love me? Why, no, no more than reason. Why then, your uncle, the prince, and Claudio have been deceived. They swore that you did. Uh, do not you love me? Drug, no! Oh, no why, more than reason. Why then, my cousin, Margaret, and Ursula are much deceived, for they did swear you did. They swore you were almost sick for me. They swore you were well nigh dead for me. <sighs> There's no such matter. You do not love me then? Why, no. But in friendly recompense. Come, cousin, I am sure that you love the gentleman. 
Yet I say he is in love, for here is a letter, a halting sonnet written of his own hand, fashioned to Beatrice. <laughs> and here is another, written my cousin's hand, stolen from her pocket, containing her affection unto Benedict. <laughs> a miracle. Here's our own hands against our hearts. Come, I will have thee. But by this light, I take thee for pity. I would not deny you, but by this good day, I yield upon great persuasion. And partly to save your life, for I heard you were in a consumption. Peace. I will stop your mouth. Woo! Backyard Bard and Green Stage's 34th season of Shakespeare in the Park. Yeah.